In this video, I want to share with you my thoughts on the 60 volt DeWalt tool assortment I have in front of me, which is the weed eater, the blower, the pole saw, and the extension. Let's get into it. Now, I'm pretty sure there's a lot of you out there just like me. Back in the day when I used power equipment all the time, most everything that was available that was any good were gas powered. I don't care if it was lawn mowers, weed eaters, blowers, hedge trimmers, pole saws, pressure washers, they were all gas. And if you're like me, the bigger the engine, the better. But then I retired and I hit the road for about 12 years, came back, bought a chunk of land and had some stuff to do outside. And because we only planned to be here a few months a year, I didn't want to deal with gas. So I started checking into the battery powered tools and I was pretty darn surprised what I saw, which led me to picking up this assortment of tools, which I'm going to talk to you about today. Now I took some notes to help me out, but I'm pretty sure you won't mind because it just helps me provide you with more accurate information. Now the first thing I want to talk about is the trimmer. I imagine that's probably the most used tool in this whole lineup. Now this trimmer is a DCST 972. It has a 17 inch cutting swath on there. It has a two speed motor which I'm going to demonstrate a little bit of that right now. So right now I have this on low. See if you hear the difference. All right, that's low. Now let's kick it up on high. All right, I'm pretty sure you, uh, you heard the difference. But I'm also going to put a few clips on here of me using this tool you'll get an idea of what it does. I typically use this in the low setting. Everything I do, the low setting handles very well. I kicked it up one time onto high just to see what it would do. But in reality, for what I do, it's overkill. And you'll see that in the clip. I usually always run this on low, always. Let's try it on high and see what happens. I'm going back to low because high for the work that I do is overkill and I'm kind of curious how much of this I can get done with one battery. So as I mentioned, a 17 inch cutting swath, it uses a .080 line, I mean, it has the tap head like most trimmers nowadays. When you wear the line down some, you tap it on the ground, it gives you a feed and then cuts it off. Works real well. Um, I don't beat the heck out of my tools, but uh, I give it a good jolt. And it's held up really well. Now I picked this up last year. I used it all last fall. We left for the winter. We came back and I've used it all summer and it had no problems whatsoever. So to me so far it's a pretty durable tool. Um, it also has the quick load spool. Now I'm not going to do a demo on that. There's a lot of videos showing that. But you pop off the cap, you feed the line through it, and you twist the head and it feeds the line in. It's actually pretty simple. I found the hardest thing to do because when you get a new spool of line, it's in a spool. And then you, it's, so when you take the line off, it naturally wants to curl like in that spool. So when you feed it through the holes, you have to line the holes up and get it to go through straight. It wants to hook and go different directions. So to me, the hardest part, the hardest part was to get that fed through that line, through that hole. Once you did that and got it strung out the way you want to, it was really easy to twist it on, put the cap back on and carry on. But um, that's the biggest thing I found with that. And it wasn't a big deal. What else is there? I talked about the two speed motor. Now I have the nine amp hour 60 volt batteries. So with the weed eater, I never timed it to give you an accurate time, 
but I'm going to show you in a little clip right here of the area that I weed eat with it and give you an idea of how long it lasts. So let's take a look at that right now. All right, nothing scientific here, but let me sh give you an idea of how far one battery goes. So the area that I am weeding right now is about 180 foot by 110 feet. And I ran it mostly on low. I ran it on high just a little bit to see what it did. But let me spin you around. We'll show you the area I did, and you can get an idea of how much I was able to complete of that area with one battery. Let's spin you around. Okay, here we go. So 100 and roughly 110 feet across here and 180 foot long and you can see I got all this done here I'm just gonna walk through real quick and show you a few patchy stuff up here I haven't done the upper section right I kind of came through here you can see the see the path I kind of did I didn't get in around the brush pile I didn't go up there right but I did all this so all this through here up through here I took a swath over this direction you can see this and this now this is Pretty thick. You saw that in the video. If you haven't, you will. But there you go. Kind of went up through here and I went up in this area. That's one battery. 110, whatever it was, I said 110 by 180. And I got, I would say, you know, it's just darn close to half. So I know that I got this over here. I figured another battery. Maybe a battery and a partial to get the rest of it. But that gives you an idea. So last season when we picked this up, it was dry. All this was dead. I think it was like October, September, October. We came through and I did this whole section, the section I just showed you, pretty much in one battery. But keep in mind, it was all dry and dead. Pretty easy to do. Now it's green and lush, a little harder to cut. There you go, but two batteries to do this section. That's pretty real life right there. All right, that gives you an idea. But to be honest with you, when I have a full battery and I take off working, by the time this battery gives up, I'm ready for a break. That's just the way it is. Now, when I'm using this, it has pretty good balance. When the battery's in it, it feels really good. But I have a pacemaker and defibrillator implanted in my chest up here. And if I go out and work for an hour or a couple hours using this weed eater, I feel a little bit right there. So for my convenience and my comfort, I have this shoulder strap that I use. And I set it up so that it goes across my shoulder, doesn't go over my defibrillator. And it really balances out the weed eater. So uh, think about that if you have, a, maybe you have a, a bad shoulder or something like that. Think about the shoulder strap. It helps out quite a bit. And then if I'm getting around some brush where I can't really get into very well, I have this extension rod. Now this is a two foot extension rod, but you know what? It does help you get away from your work a little bit in case you're in some trees. You want to get it around the base of the trees. It might have some low limbs. That works out really well. Or if I'm using the pole pruner, that's what I use when I use it the most. All right, so I'm not going to drag on about the weed eater. It really is a workhorse. I'm really happy with it. I haven't gone through anything that it wouldn't handle. I'd highly recommend it. So let's talk about the next thing and let's talk about the blower. Now the model number on this blower is a DCBL772. DeWalt says it puts out 600 CFM. I have no way to measure that. I don't have a gadget to do that, but I have no reason to doubt them. And they also say it puts out winds up to 125 miles per hour, which again, I have no reason to doubt. Let me throw a battery in this thing and fire it up for you. So the batteries just slide right in the back like this. Pretty convenient as always. This battery is not full. It has two bars out of three. That's okay for this demonstration. Let's fire it up here. So when you fire this thing up, it has pretty good power behind it. It kind of wants to move your arm back. Feels really good. And also, it has this lever right here. You can turn this on. That way, if you have a lot of blowing to do, you can just push that lever and not, not use the trigger, even though the trigger is easy to use. Now, for us, we have a 400-foot horseshoe driveway. We have a 30 by 30 concrete patio. We have sidewalks. We have some walkways. I have no problem whatsoever to go do that entire area, and I do it two, three times a week. Now, 
this uses more power than any of the other tools by far. If I go out and just fire it up and blow pretty steady, I'm going to get 15 minutes, 20 minutes of use. If you turn it on and off and go from different areas, you'll get a little bit more, obviously. But if you just turn it on and blow, you're going to get a good solid 15 minutes. And it works until the battery is dead and it doesn't. It's not like it gets down to two bars and you notice a difference in, in uh, air movement. You might just a smidgen, but not very much. It works until it says, I'm done. I like that feature too. So also, sh I'll show you some more clips of me using it. There's not much to see using it a blower, but we'll throw a couple clips in here. You can check it out. Okay, next, let's talk about the pole saw. I don't think there even is a model number on this thing. You just find the DeWalt pole saw. But this has a 8-inch bar on it with a chain. It has an auto oiler. And it has a little hook right here they claim will help you pull down limbs if you cut them off and they hang up. It's pretty small, but it's there. It works really well. So first, the first complaint I would have about it is the auto oiler. Now, when I put oil in it, I go cut, the oil goes somewhere. But when I check the, the chain when I'm cutting, it's never really oiled very well. The good thing is, when I'm using this, I'm not out there cutting it and having it going through a piece of wood for 15 minutes. It's short bursts, so it's not getting the chain real hot. I'm not too worried about it. But the oil just doesn't really go on the chain that much, I've noticed. But it works really well. So when I put this on, the attachment, in fact, let me do that for you real quick. Let me set this out of the way. It's pretty simple to do. You just loosen this nut up here. I know you can't see it in the video very well. Push a button. This attachment is gone. I'm going to set it out of the way right over here. Then you take your pole saw. It has some arrows here. It shows you where to line it up. You slide it in. Push the button, slip it in, tighten up the wing nut, and you are you're good to go. So, some things that might help you with this pole saw. Number one, I'm about 5'11", and my reach to here is about 7 feet. So I took some notes, I kind of did some measurements, I won't bore you with them. So for me, at, uh, with this, I can reach 10 foot. So you figure 7 foot is my reach to here, there's 3 foot to the bar. So you have 10 feet of usable space. And that does pretty well for me. Now, you have the extension rod, this extension rod is 2 feet, so you just Loosen this wing nut, take this off, slip this in its place, tighten it down, put the pole saw in this side, and put it in. And now I have a 12-foot reach. And the pole saw does pretty well. Now, I'm pretty sure you can't see it in this video. I'm going to go down and take a shot of it. But there's a pretty good pile of limbs back here that I went and did with this saw. And that was pretty much really one battery. It's hard to measure the battery time on this because you're cutting down a limb, you're walking around, you're cutting down a limb, walking around. But really, this thing surprised the heck out of me. Eight inch bar, anything that you can touch with this bar, you're going to cut through. It never bogs down, it's just a good solid machine. Um, I did take off walking through a trail here a while back and I was just about done cutting all the limbs out of that trail. <clears throat> and I caught a snag I probably wasn't paying attention to the tension on the chain and it hopped off. I didn't have a wrench with me to put it back on the bar. 
So lesson learned, always carry a little wrench with you if you're going to be out walking around. But uh, this, and that's on high. There you go, that's on low. And when I'm using this, I never even think about it much. Typically, I'm on a low, I guess, when I use this. But that, uh, that's another great tool. And here's some clips to give you an idea what it'll do. Right, here's that pile of limbs I was talking about. You can get an idea of the diameters I've been cutting. Nothing huge, but there is some good sized stuff in there. And that's a pretty good sized pile. And I would venture to say that I cut all that pretty much with one battery. Maybe it took a little more than one battery. It's hard to judge. Another thing to consider when you're thinking about your power tool selection is, for example, us. We live in an area that gets very dry in the summer. And we are not allowed to run gas-powered equipment during fire danger season. Yet we can still come out here with a battery operated tool and cut some limbs, we can run a weed eater, we can do things like that without fear of breaking the rules. Something to think about, it's very important to us. All right, there you go. That's pretty much my take on the DeWalt 60 volt tools, except for the battery. So as I mentioned, we have the nine amp hour 60 volt batteries for the flex volt. And once I use one up and I toss it in the charger, I can figure it's going to take at least a good hour to get it fully charged. Hour to hour 15. I've never really put a timer on it, so I can't really tell you to the exact second, but figure a good hour anyway. But you know what? For the use that we have here, the things I've talked about that you know about now, I have two batteries. I've never felt like I should go buy a third battery. But I'll tell you what. Next season, when we come back, we're about done here this summer. We're going to be storing these through the winter. I'm going to come back and be happy. I don't have to worry about carburetors and fuel and, and uh, fuel additives and all kinds of things. I'm going to come back, charge batteries and work. But next season, I'm going to buy the DeWalt chainsaw. That'll be a new addition to this. Now, and because we're going to mainly cut some small stuff, we're not going to go out and throw it in the back of the truck, head up into the woods and come back down with two cords of wood. We're going to go out and cut some limbs and toy around. We're going to pick up a chainsaw, add that to our collection, and no doubt when I get it, I'll come back on here and tell you about it. So uh, maybe hit that subscribe button so you don't miss that. There you go. That's our take on the, De on the DeWalt 60 volt tools. Very happy with them. Would I buy them again? The answer is yes. I am not affiliated with DeWalt any way, fashion, or form. They don't know I'm doing this video. They didn't send me anything. We paid our own hard-earned money for all this. No affiliation whatsoever, but I will say, I'm going to put some links down below in our description of this video. I think you can buy these things on Amazon, and I'm going to put some links to them if you can. If you are interested in these and you go down and click on those links and buy these through Amazon, we will get a very small kickback, and we would appreciate you if you do that, but it's no big deal if you don't. That's okay. Anyway, hey, as always, if you enjoyed this video, how about a thumbs up? If you got any information out of here that's useful to you, how about a thumbs up? Leave us a comment down below. Do you have this same system? Are you thinking about getting this system? Do you have something you think might be better? Do you think maybe I should look at a different battery-operated chainsaw? I know I'm looking at a different brand for a battery-powered lawnmower. Maybe tell me what you do for battery-powered lawnmowers. Anyway, a thumbs up be appreciated. Comments down below, I always enjoy. Consider hitting that subscribe button. As always, have a great day. We'll see you in the next video. 
Wow, that's like the beginning of a movie.